Powerhouse, presented by Alliant Energy. Mark. Hi, Megan. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. This is Mark Klein, and he is the manager of Air Filter Sales and Service in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and you manufacture air filters. Yes, we do. This is going to be really interesting. How often does someone get a first-hand look at how filters are manufactured? Probably not very often. Not very often. <laughs> Tell me what's going on here. Well, what you see going on here, Megan, is we're cutting filter material that will be used in our manufacturing process for disposable air filters. Okay, and this is where you put everything together here? Yeah, but uh, we cut the different components of the filter up at the end of the shop here, and then our assemblers come and cut the material that will go into that filter, and then they bring them back to their station where they're assembled, and then we send them down the line to our quality control area over here in the corner, uh, where they're inspected for, make sure they have the right filter media, the right size, and then from there they get shipped onto the end user. You've got lots of colorful media here. Yes. What does that mean to you? Well, the different colors uh, indicate different thicknesses of filter media, as well as different types of media, different efficiencies. Great. Well, let's get into it. Okay. Show us the different types of filters you have. I have some different medias over here. We can go over and take a look at those, and I can explain that to you okay. a little bit better. Well, Mark, all three of these filters look very familiar to me, um, but can you explain to us what, what type each one is and the efficiency, advantages, sure. that sort of thing? Uh, what you're looking at is the three types that are most commonly found on store shelves. Uh, this filter here is a permanent washable type filter. Uh, it's a one-time purchase. You clean the filter typically every 30 days. However, it's a very inefficient filter, and you can see that by the size of the holes in the filter itself. Boy, I can see right through it. If you're going to use this, we recommend that you spray it with a filter oil to help hold the dirt in the filter. Okay, what is the efficiency on this? Uh, it's not tested, so I'm, uh, we assume it's in the probably 5 to 6% efficient range, very very minimal. Okay, is this one more efficient? The step up from that is the, the typical throwaway disposable filter, mm -hmm. a little bit more efficient. Uh, however, you have to keep purchasing those because you'd throw them away and, and put a new one in. Uh, this one also is not tested, but we assume it's going to test in the 7 to 8 percent efficient range. Okay. Still not, not a very good filter. The step up from that is the pleated disposable filter, and they pleat that material so that you extend the surface of the filter. Typically three times as much surface area in this filter as is, there is in this filter, roughly about three times the expense to buy one, but the efficiency of this filter is going to be in the 25 to 30 percent range. Great. Okay. Um, so just to clarify one more time, this one is a one-time purchase. Right. These need to be replaced. When do I need when do I need to replace them? On Powerhouse, we always say replace or, or check your filters every month. Is that true? It's true to a point. You should check your filter every month if you're using one of these types of filters. However, this filter, since it's three times as much filtering area there, should last up to three times as long. Okay. Uh, one of the best rules of thumb to determine if you need to change your filter yet or not is when you can't see the color of the material anymore, such as this dirty example I have here, uh, you can tell it's quite a bit dirtier than the, than the new one. Yes, I can tell a huge difference. Another way is to hold the filter up to the light and look through the back side of the filter and you'll see how much light is actually still coming through that you filter what, material. Though? I can still see some light through here. That's correct. This filter looks a lot dirtier than it actually is and and when the filter gets a good coat of dirt on it like this, it's actually going to start doing a little bit better job because the dirt that loads into those filter fibers will start to close the pores of the fibers, therefore providing a little bit better efficiency. Okay. Great. Now, looking at all this dirt, here's a question. What if someone has some allergy issues at their house or someone in their home, you know, has a dust issue or severe allergies, seasonal al allergies? Would one of these be better than another, or is there something else that we should uh, consider? If your, fil if your furnace will only accept a one-inch filter, I would definitely recommend going with the pleated filter. Okay. Uh, you might want to also consider stepping up to a more efficient filter, which, such as this one over here. This is huge. Now, this one's going to start out at about 65% efficient. Wow. Now, my furnace couldn't accommodate something like this. Do you have to buy a whole new furnace for this? No. It can be retrofitted into existing furnaces into the return air duct. Uh, you don't have to buy a new furnace. If you are purchasing a new furnace, you might want to think about having this installed at that time. So this part can be attached to a current furnace? That's correct. And then this is the replaceable part? The, the media itself is what you actually replace. Okay. I can see that the pleats are really deep in this and that 
They're very deep and pretty close together. They're, that's why they install these plastic combs to keep the pleats from actually touching each other. Okay, now what would the cost be for something like this? The unit itself should sell in the neighborhood of $150. That's complete with the first filter. But then you have to have that installed and you're going to have some cost involved in the sheet metal work on that. Okay, but even if it's under $500, you know, if you have allergy concerns at your house, that's not much of an investment to make. Not much, and the replacement filters for that unit sell for about $20, so you're spending $20 a year on filters for it. Right. Um, speaking of allergies and things, I hear the word HEPA a lot, HEPA filters, you know, in relationship to allergies and those sort of things. Is that something that I should consider for my home? Typically, you can't use a HEPA filter in a home unless it's in a portable air cleaner type uh, Mechanism. What does HEPA stand for? HEPA stands for High Efficiency Particulate Air Filter. And I have a sample of that right here. One of the reasons you can't normally use this in a residential application is because of the sheer size of it. This filter is 12 inches deep. They are available in a 6 inch deep filter. It's very the tight. Other, absolutely. The other reason is it's very restrictive. Uh, most residential furnaces will not handle the type of restriction that's supplied by this filter. You gave us some great tips. Thanks very so. much. Do you mind if I Thank keep you. walking around your shop? Absolutely not. And on my way out, I'm going to pick out some filters. Okay? Good. Thanks. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be back with more Powerhouse. Energy. We're on for you.